Good morning, and welcome to worship with us this morning as we come to hear about the Good Shepherd of the sheep. Let us together rise and begin our service this day with the ringing of a church bell. We begin this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, He who, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, Baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and the everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the world, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. How are you named? Isla, receive the sign of the cross, both upon the forehead and upon the heart, to mark you as one redeemed by Christ, who is the crucified. Let us pray. 
Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet, according to your great mercy, you promised, excuse me, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his host in the Red Sea, yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavishing washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Isla according to your boundless mercy and bless her with true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through this saving flood, all sin in her, which has been inherited from Adam and which she herself has committed since, would be drowned and died. Grant that she be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers, and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that, with all believers in your promise, she would be declared worthy of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It is your task as sponsors to confess with the whole church the faith in our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in whose name this child is to be baptized. After Isla has been baptized, you are at all times to remember her in your prayers, put her in mind of her baptism, and as much as in you lies, give your counsel and aid, especially if she should lose her parents, that she be brought up in the true knowledge of worship of God, be taught the Ten Commandments, the Creed, the Lord's Prayer, and that as she grows in years, you would place in her hands the Holy Scriptures, bring her to the services of God's house, and provide for her further instruction in the Christian faith, and she come to the sacrament of Christ's body in blood. And thus, abiding in her baptismal grace, in the communion with the church, she may grow up to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of Jesus Christ. This, then, do you intend gladly and willingly to do. God, enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work, and with his grace fulfill what we are unable to do. Amen. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased. And he said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not forbid them. For such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and he blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. In order to implore the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ upon this gathering of this child into the family of our Father, let us all with the family pray the prayer he gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Amen. With Isla together, Isla, do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes, I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Yes, I believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Yes, I believe. Isla, do you desire to be baptized? I lie baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. Give me that.
Receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ, who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet with him joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. In holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of his Son, your Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir with us of all the treasures in heaven and the one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as a sister in Christ, that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. We welcome you in the name of our Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Isla the new birth and holy baptism that made her a member of your son, Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as has now become your child, you would keep her in baptismal grace, and according to your good pleasure, she would may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name, and finally, with all the saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. You may return to your seats. Please rise. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. I confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed by my fault, by my own fault, by my own most grievous fault. Wherefore, I pray God Almighty to have mercy on me, forgive me all my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
of victory for our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit that when we hear the voice of the shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through this same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives The first reading is from Acts chapter 4 and beginning with the first verse. The first reading can be found on page 1058 of your pew Bible. The priests and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John and because it was evening they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed, and the number of men grew to about 5,000. The next day, the rulers, elders, and teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there, and so were Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and the other men of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a cripple and are asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel. It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. He is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the capstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from 1 John chapter 3 and beginning with the 16th verse. The epistle reading can be found on page 1185 of your pew Bible. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need, but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. This then is how we know that we belong to the truth, and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we obey his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. Those who obey his commands live in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. This is the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. 
The man runs away because he is hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own account. I have authority to lay it down and the authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. This is the gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I give thanks to my God in heaven for the faith given to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. You know, the old saying is true. If you want it done right, do it yourself. And in this case, with our Lord and Savior, those words are as true as always. It doesn't matter who we are on this earth. We are nothing more than the hired help. It was only Jesus who could go to the cross. It was only the good shepherd who, out of complete and pure love, could give up his life for the sheep. As much as you think or might think that you would give up your life for someone, try putting that same thought into giving up your life for an enemy or someone who hated you. It was only and is only the good shepherd who gave up his life on behalf of the sheep. And in many respects, the text is so very true for us today. The shepherd knows us, and we know the shepherd. And because of that, we know that that shepherd loves us. That he will not abandon us as the hired hand abandons the sheep. Think about it. It's very true. In those cases where you want the job done right, you do it yourself, is the same mentality. And my grandfather used to instill that in me long ago. As I said during Bible class this morning, 
As I tell my children, if you are doing a job for someone, do more than they ask. Do a better job than is expected. Because in many respects, you are the hired hand. And especially when you're watching out. How many babysitters do we have in here? Former babysitters, right? The reality is this. People leave their children in your care. And you better be doing a job that is more than is expected because you have precious little ones or older ones, depending on how that goes. And yet, people entrust their children to others. God entrusts His children, you, to servants like me as hired hands. And I would like to think, and I hope that history has shown, that I'm not going to take off and run when the wolves come. But unlike Christ, I'm prone to do that. Unlike Christ, I am not perfect. I know for many of you that's a shock. <laughs> I get that. But the fact is, it's Jesus who will stand in the fire. It's the text that reminds us very clearly that we know this truth because the Spirit gave it to us. Just as this morning the Holy Spirit was given to Isla. We know the truth of the Scriptures as the Epistle lesson reads this day. This is how we know that love is. That Jesus laid down his life for you and for me. I've said it often. I've said it many times. Love is not an emotion. Love is an action. And the action that the good shepherd shows is that he is willing to die for you. And that in his death you have a freedom that is beyond all freedom. A freedom that is everlasting. A freedom that lets go of all of the difficulties, the pains, the sufferings, the hard feelings the guilt and the sin of this world. And there on the cross, Jesus gives up his life for you. He is the good shepherd that fought off the wolf, Satan. The wolf that even today still tries to prowl on the outside of the property. Still is looking in at the sheep pen, just trying to find a chink in the armor. To be able to sneak in. To be able to sneak in and just capture maybe one of those lambs. And I've seen this firsthand. I've told many of you on my second trip to Kenya in the Maasai Mara, we were sitting there witness to a pride of lions feasting on a uh, wildebeest. And as we stayed there for an hour, an hour and a half, it was, it was amazing, by the way, but we started to drive away. And we saw another wildebeest about 500 yards away kind of limping and, and sickly. And I turned to my good friend Jim Wolf and I said, there's breakfast. <laughs> it's true. The wolf is prowling around just, just trying to see the one he can pick off. The one might, who might have a chink in their faith armor. The one who might have doubts about what Jesus, the good shepherd, has done for them. In fact, even this week in a conversation with uh, a non-member but a, a friend and a Christian, uh, I was having this conversation. They were talking to me about their doubts about God, about their, their doubts about the things that God does in life and why. The great question, right, of those of us who know God, why? Why would he allow a massive earthquake like happened in Nepal and several thousand people die, right? Why would a God who loves us allow that to happen? And we got to talking and it was evident to me that this man was struggling in his faith. And so I said to him, I said, you know what the scriptures tell us? That we know, this text, that we know love and we know it because we see the love that Jesus had in his willingness to give up his life for us. The Bible is clear. There is no greater love on earth than this, than to give up your life for a friend. And yet, the Bible says that it's even more important for you to pray for those who persecute you and those who hate you. And Jesus did that very thing there on the cross. There is no greater love that we have than the love that is shown by our Savior, Jesus Christ, the great good shepherd of the sheep. You know, I, I often, I said this to this gentleman this week, I often think about that reality because what else does a shepherd do besides protect the sheep? What else does he do? Excuse me? Okay, he feeds them, right? What else? Look at the staff that the picture is showing of Jesus the shepherd. It's got a hook on the end of it. And what's that hook for? To bring you back when you're going away. To kind of wake you up to discipline you, to shake you a little bit, and to remind you who the shepherd is. And I think that's critically important for us Christians to know. 
We walk in a life of love and forgiveness of Jesus. As the text says for us today, Jesus reminds us, I lay down my life for the sheep because I can. Because I can. And I also can take it back up. I do this because it is a gift my Father has given to me. And yet sometimes we, God's children, the sheep of the sheep pen, we forget a single fact. There are other sheep out there that are not of this pen. And Jesus says, I, the good shepherd, must go after those sheep also so that one day there will be one flock with one shepherd. And what does that mean? That means that we, God's people, must understand that the family of faith is huge. It doesn't just reside in these walls or in the walls of a fellow congregation down the street. It resides in the house of God who has given the world his son in love. My dear friends, it is so true for us. The Bible tells us today, dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and truth. This is his command, to believe in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another. The biggest problem in the church today, bar none in my opinion, is God's people don't love each other. And that starts with the fact that they don't love themselves. Because they don't accept the fact that Jesus' death and resurrection has paid for all those bad things that they have done. You know, I marvel when I have people come in and sit before me with heavy burdens on their heart. And people, will st whenever somebody starts out like this, I know where it's going, right? Well, I got to tell you something. You know, and it's not good. And it's been very difficult. And, you know, they, they prepare you. They run you up to this great and miraculous, wonderful, bad thing in their life. And when they're done, I say these words, is that it? I mean, seriously, is that it? Well, what are you talking about? This is horrible. This is horrible. Is it any more horrible? And you're going down the road, you know, of gossiping or this or that. And does the blood of Jesus forgive that sin? The answer is? And so I say again, is that it? Is that it? Is this all you can muster in sinfulness before God? Is this all that God sent his son to forgive? This one little thing? And yet the burden by Satan is so heavy. It is so great. The guilt when we look in the mirror is so dark and complex. And yet it's true. The blood of Christ forgives that sin. And any sin you can muster. By the love of the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep, you are forgiven. You are made whole and righteous in the sight of God. And now you're able to love each other as Christ has first loved you. And then the Bible reminds us we shouldn't just talk about love. Because love is not an emotion. It's an action. So the Bible says go love each other. Serve each other. Care for those who have needs. And we see too in the text if you go by the story of the one who has needs. And you just ignore them. Shame on you. Look what it says in the first lesson for today. They ask Peter before the, the great council, whose authority are you healing in? Look what, look what he says, because this is good stuff for you and for me today. He says, by what power, in verse uh, 7b, or what name do you do this? And he answers, it is by the name of Jesus of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. This is the man who stands before you healed by his power. And then these are the best words, I think, of them all. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which you can be saved other than the name Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Savior of the world. That is whose name we do this in. And so I tell you the truth, that is the name of our good shepherd, Jesus Christ, the one who creates through his death and resurrection the salvation of all mankind and the forgiveness of sins. My friends, rejoice in that knowledge that that Savior is your good shepherd. He guards you from the wolf. He stands ready to forgive your sins. And occasionally he reaches out and brings you back. I know many of you don't need that. But I tell you the truth that when you need it, it's good. It's good to know that the shepherd will also not only be there to help you, but he'll be there to correct you because that's what love is. 
Love reminds us that in all things, Christ our Savior is there for you and for me. Let that be your joy both now and always. In his name we say, amen. May God the Father who gives you the great gift of his Son, may God the Son who gives you the great gift of his life and death, and may God the Holy Spirit continue to bless, guide, lead, and strengthen you both now and always. Amen. We now worship the Lord with joy with our offering. Let us together rise for the offertory. this time we ask for any prayers to be brought before the Lord this day. Go ahead. Prayers for Harold. Ron. Prayers for my dad for healing and healing. Healing for Ken. Nancy. Prayers for Jim, who's suffering from cancer. Nathaniel. What was that again? Yes. With that, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Friends in Christ, I urge you all to lift up your hearts to God and pray with me as Christ our Lord has taught us and freely promised to hear us. Heavenly Father, in the great news of your Son, Jesus Christ, being the good shepherd of the sheep, we give thanks. We rejoice that the Holy Spirit has shown us this, told us this, and created the faith in us to believe this. 
Heavenly Father, we ask you to earnestly continue to bless us with the Holy Spirit, to have faith in the good shepherd of the sheep, who we know will not leave or forsake or abandon his children, but has gone to the grave for us, who has given his life and death so that we may have freedom in the gospel, and who has risen from death to show us the power he has. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with May's family at her passing. Send your Holy Spirit to guide, lead, and strengthen these, your people. Give them the truth of the resurrection of all flesh and the good news of the gospel in Jesus Christ. Be the comforter of all, Lord God, this day as we implore you, Lord, in your mercy. Be with all those who travel this day, O Lord, that you may be, bring them safely to where they are going and brought back safely to their place of rest. That all that they do and say may be glorifying unto you this day, now and forevermore. Lord, in your mercy. We ask you to be with your people this day, O Lord, who we name in our hearts and now who we name Jean, Sharon, Harold, Ken, Jim, Lexi, Jason, Elijah, all who we name in our hearts, Lord God, that you give health and healing, safety and comfort, protection and patience to meet the days ahead with the sure and certain hope of your love in their life now and always, Lord, in your mercy. Be with the leaders of our land and of our church for President Obama, President Harrison, and Bishop Steckholz. We ask you to give wisdom to meet the days ahead, knowing that all that they do and say will declare you, God of God and King of Kings. Grant this, Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us grace that your holy name be hallowed by us and all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word, the fervent love shown forth in our lives. Graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. We trust, O Lord, in your mercy to hear and answer us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is truly good right to give him thanks and praise. Your holy Lord, almighty, Father, everlasting. God, most especially, we are bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who has sacrificed for us and bore the sin of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Holy, holy Lord, God of Sabaoth, adored heaven and earth with full acclaim, shout the glory of your name. Sing Hosanna in the highest, sing Hosanna to the Lord, truly blessed. Comes in the name of the Lord. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. By his death, he has redeemed us from bondage to sin and death. And by his resurrection, he has delivered us into new life in him. Grant us to keep the feast in sincerity and truth, faithfully eating his body given in death and drinking his blood poured out for our salvation until we pass through the death to the promised land of life eternal. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the complete remission of all your sins. Do this often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat, excuse me, as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving your body and blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom. And teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The 
peace of the Lord be with you always. this, the precious body and blood of Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you. Depart now, forgiven by the Savior. Go in his peace.
this, the precious body and blood of Jesus Christ strengthen you now and forever. Depart with his peace. Amen. Precious body and blood of Jesus Christ, strengthen you now and forever. Depart in his peace. Amen.
let's together rise for the post communion canticle. <laughs> We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us in the same in faith towards you and in fervent love towards one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Please be seated as we invite the announcements to come forward at this time. Good morning. Last weekend, I had the distinct pleasure, along with uh, Rick Crane, of chaperoning the confirmation retreat to the seminary in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And four of our young people uh, were able to go to that confirmation treat. Two of them are here. One is going to be coming up. Here he comes, Jordan. Um, we had an absolutely fantastic trip. And these individuals really, really um, put a good face to Peace Lutheran Church. We were so proud of them. There was not one person who attended that did not know Ben's name when we left. <laughs> Everybody. Had a boy, Ben. Knew Ben's name. Ben was the first one in line. I say he was the leader of the pack. He opened the door for every single person going into chapel, leaving chapel. Anna was the only uh, youth, young person that volunteered to pray at one of our um, sessions. Jordan was one of our team leaders for the, the different groups. Um, they just participated. I was so proud of them. I know Rick was too. And we played a number of games. And one of the things I asked the kids on the way home is just to tell me something you know, that they really liked about the weekend. So I'm going to ask them again today, whether they remember what they told me last week. I'm going to ask them again and to share with you, what was one of the things you liked about that weekend, Ben? Probably owning a, kind of like holding a key all the time. A key to what? A key to a dorm. 
He had his own room with Jordan, they shared, and he had a key to his dorm room. Anna, how about you? What was one of the things you really liked about the weekend? I liked the recreation room. Yeah, they played foosball like crazy. They think we should get a foosball table for the church. And Jordan, how about you? I like the classes. The classes? So I, I just want to say thank you very much for everybody who helped make this a success. Um, it, it was absolutely fantastic, and I really hope that this becomes a yearly event for our confirmation students. Thank you. I want to thank Rick and Kathy for leading. Um, as many of you know, I'm going to be gone next week to uh, the Kentucky Derby, and that's the reason why I didn't go on this trip, because I was going to be gone. But in the fall, we do intend on taking them back, and which I will be with them on that trip. Uh-oh. Don't worry, my brethren at the seminary have already told me, not about the kids, but about the parents. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, I have a couple more announcements. Please bear with me because they're, they're important announcements. They're in your bulletin, but I know not everybody has a chance to always read the bulletin announcements. But Pastor, as you know, has been nominated for um, Bishop for the English District. And the English District Convention is going to be in June in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, the district itself has asked congregations to put together at what's called witness bracelets. It's a servant event, a servant that we can take and give to people who go into the mission field. It's just a little piece of leather string with seven plastic beads on it, but each of the beads is a different color, and each of them represents something about Jesus and to be able to share the, the knowledge of salvation with people who are in other lands. When a mission team goes out, they usually give out about 1,000 bracelets, and at this point in time, the entire stock of these bracelets has been completely depleted. So. I want to make him look good when he goes to the district convention, and the and the council has um, yeah, and the council has approved. Be careful, Cinda. I stand above the now. The council has approved um, the expenditure to purchase the materials for these witness bracelets. I have enough to make 1,300 witness bracelets. That is just one and one third trip that a mission team can can take. Um, next Sunday, after service, I will be downstairs in the fellowship hall, and I will give a little training class on how to make these witness bracelets. They will come in packages. Now, just so you know, these packages are being done pretty much by Paul and myself, uh, putting them together in packs of 20. So you can take a pack of 20 home and make the bracelets at home and bring them back to me. So I'm asking as many people as possible next week to come down to the fellowship hall, quickly learn how to make these witness bracelets, and take a pack or two or three or whatever, how many you want to make at your home, and, uh, and help make this a success. And also, uh, Peters Township itself is going to be hosting um, the annual Relay for Life in May, on May 16th. We got a, a request from the community that all churches in the community help participate um, with a meal that's going to take place at the end of the day for the Relay for, for Life. Um, all the funds are going to go to uh, help with uh, American Cancer Society. There is a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board back there. They're just asking you to make cupcakes, pasta salad, brownies, whatever you can make to donate for the dinner. So I'm asking all chefs, cooks, bakers, etc., to consider making one of those side dishes. Sign up. If you can get it to the um, Peters Township Middle School that day, that's great. If not, I will make arrangements. If you bring it to the church, I will take it over. But I really would like to have a good showing from Peace Lutheran Church in the community that we're willing to help with this Relay for Life. Thank you. Oh, one more thing. We're having cake after church for celebration of Isla's baptism, so have a piece of cake. Bye. Despite my secretary's desire to make me look good, you should know that fact is that you do nothing short of obeying God's command to love thy neighbor as thyself. And I got to tell you, at Winkle Pastors Conference last week, one of the pastors asked me how it is that I have my congregation and my congregation giving so much money to the district. And I reminded that pastor that it's not hard to do what God commands when your people believe in God. Understand this that your acts of kindness and love do nothing for me or for you, but bear witness to that whom you believe in. That's what the Bible says. And make no mistake about it. Make him look good, not me. Okay. Follow that one. Oh, well, I was already thinking that when she mentioned cake. So, um, 
So I have two announcements for you. The first one is from Mr. Funiak, who couldn't be here today. There is a sign-up sheet back there for the Penn's Cave weekend trip. Um, it's May 15th through the 17th, and there is more information and the sign-up sheet back there, along with itinerary that is in full color. Um, my second announcement, um, sorry. Last year, um, I raised $512 for the um, Walk Now for Autism Speaks, which I asked you guys to donate, and you did. That was wonderful. Thank you. Um, that was a lot of money. Um, this year, um, I'm involved in it again and it's through the school. It's not at Heinz Field this time, it's at Chunley Park. Um, the goal is to raise money for autism awareness and research. It's on Sunday, June 14th at 8 a.m. And I would like to open it up to all members of the church. I put a sign-up sheet back there if you're interested. We can start our own team and raise money, every $150 that you raise, you get a t-shirt, but it all goes for a good cause, and it's a lot of fun. Um, last year was a beautiful day. I would hope it would be this day. I know we probably would miss church, but. Unacceptable. Um, it's, it's a really good cause. It's a really fun day. They have booths set up uh, with information about autism. You can, you know, win small prizes. You get to see the amount of people that showed up last year was just amazing. I mean, there had to be 10,000 people there. Wow. I mean, it was great. It was crazy. You couldn't drive anywhere around Heinz Field. It was awesome. But um, I just wanted to know if anyone was interested. So there's a sign-up sheet back there. Just throw your name and your phone number, email address, something on there so that I can contact you. Um, that'd be great. It'll be up. Um, I'm going to take it down after church next Sunday, so you have this week and next week to think about it and let me know. I think it would be really cool to start a team from this church and get our you know, name out there. And Wear your shirts. Peace, Lutheran. Mm. Thank you, Kara. A couple things there with Kara. Did I hear correctly? Are you, have you graduated? Yeah. It's coming. You know, it's unbelievable that I've been in the church long enough where I could say this. But Kara was amongst my first confirmands I've ever had with Alex. And, um, you know, it's nice to see as a pastor that the young people of God's church continue the work that God started a long time ago. So uh, congratulations on that. Please sign up for that youth event if you'd like to go. And um, we look forward. Lastly, I will have, the ushers will have one last time this week, the information for the Act 153 for the clearances. If you have not done that, please, please uh, do that. If you've got any questions, see me or Kathy on that. Yeah, today's a work day, so uh, uh, have fun by staying and having some cake and then helping us get the church in order for spring. With that, let us rise and close our service with song. Thank you. 